Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, this is going to be a follow-up video to something that I've done recently where I reviewed how you can use this uh, remote I.O. module and how easy it is to use, uh, you know, communicate with over Modbus uh, TCP and communicate with other devices using serial. So if you're interested in the details then you can watch that video that I'm going to link in the description and also in the cards. But that was an interesting comment how can you configure this in Home Assistant? And I do have a Raspberry Pi. I think I even had the SD card uh, with uh, Home Assistant, uh, although for some reason it didn't work, so I had to reinstall it. But I wanted to learn how it, it can be done. And uh, well, it is working, as you can see it now. So I'm just quickly going to show you how you can set it up. And the reason I wanted to make this video, because it is so easy. So I wasn't sure how well Home Assistant handles Modbus but it just works straight out of the box. The only inconvenience is, is that you just have to configure it manually in the configuration YAML um, and you know it doesn't get discovered. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the only reason. Otherwise it works fine. So let me show you what I have done. You can see the uh, this remote IO group that I've created here. And just to recap, this particular model has uh, four outputs. So these are relay outputs that you can connect to, to 40 volt devices up to 5 amp. And um, I have configured the first and the third output as um, uh, just like lights. As you can see, I've configured the second output as a fan. So it just has different icons and the fourth output as a switch. So there are only certain entities that the Modbus uh, integration supports. So I wanted to just show every single one that you can do. So as you can see, okay, it took a little bit of time. As you can see, it uh, you know handles all of these, and I've configured this so that it uh, also reads these statuses. And actually, let me show you this. So if I communicate, if I set up this device and I start communicating with it, um, did I did I do this correctly? Connection. Oh, okay, connect. Yeah. So if I set up this device and I start communicating with it, just reading the input registers uh, for the front of it, and if I start to operate the inputs uh, using uh, a different you know, way, because, well, you can communicate with it from different sources. So now you can see that I've turned on the first input and I have set up the integration so it reads the device, I think, every five seconds. So there is a delay here. But as you can see, it will update the status in uh, Home Assistant. So not only that I can read it, but it would also respond to the, um, to the actual state of the device. Okay, so, that, those, are the, uh, so that those are the outputs. And it also has three, sorry, four analog inputs that you can see here. So AI1, AI2, uh, 3 and 4. And uh, this supports... Uh, um, current inputs 0 to 20 ohms 4 to 20 or or 4 to 20 ohms and uh, I've just uh, connected a potentiometer just for testing and what I have done is I created two values there is a row value which comes from the uh, input um, or you know from the register and I've created a template which uh, uses a calculation to calculate it into like a human readable value so this is the the value Let's assume that you have a pressure transducer connected to that, which uh, is connected to a um, uh, at the end of a barrel, which let's say collects rainwater. So the pressure transducer is going to return a value which is proportional to the height of the water in the barrel, and you can just use a calculation to calculate, uh, you know, the volume. And you're going to see how I did it using a template node. And this, uh, by default, I think, reads the um, inputs every 15 seconds. So the update is going to be fairly slow. But I just uh, changed the port and we are going to see that uh, uh, in a short amount of time, both of these values update. So this is how you can read the values of these inputs and also how you can transform the values into something else, let's say. So, so now the value is 2675, which according to my calculation translates to 167.5 liters, or yeah, you can do gallons or whatever. So there, those are the analog inputs. 
and I also have a separate sensor connected to it using Modbus Serial, so I can read that as well. And this is a temperature and the humidity sensor, so it has it shows two values: one is the temperature, and the other one is the humidity, which I can read here. So that's how I can read the values or also you know set the values as the outputs, and it works just fine. So. I think I'm going to uh, switch into the settings screen and we are going to see that how you can configure it in the YAML file. Just to set this straight, I'm really novice in uh, Home Assistant, so whatever I'm doing, maybe there is a better way of doing that. And if there is a better way, you can let me know and we can all learn in the comment section below. It is a complete new installation. I haven't really done anything. It was just discovering a couple of devices around my house, for example, this Shelly 3M. So as you can see, the configuration and the, uh, the desktop is very bare bone. What I have done is I uh, installed this file editor um, extension so I can edit the configuration uh, YAML with it. And uh, it is loading now. Okay. So I have created all these settings for the things that you can see on the screen now. So let's uh, start from the beginning. Oh, by the way, you're going to find a link in the video description where you can download this, uh, at least not the whole YAML, but I think for this mode bus section, which is relevant here. So I, first of all, I created a mode bus section because obviously we are going to read a mode bus device. And in the beginning, I specified all the connection parameters. So the name of this device is remote IO and um, it is a TCP connection. This is the IP address of the device. And well, that's the IP address of this remote IO gateway that uh, uh, I've configured in the previous video. And it's using 502 port, which is the standard mode bus port. Fine. And now we can configure all the different um, things that you see on the screen. And as you can see, I have created lights, entities, fans, switches, sensors, and finally there are templates as well. So let, let me start with the uh, simple one. So these are the outputs. And so this is the first output, which I named output one. And this is a light type. So this is why the light is appearing in the, um, uh, in the dashboard. So we are reading the main Modbus device, which has a slave ID of one. And again, if you remember the first video, the first output is coil. So the, uh, the type is coil and the address is zero. And I set the scan interval to five. So that's, it reads every five seconds. I think the delay is 10 and I want it to be even quicker. And to be honest, if this wouldn't be home assistant, I would be setting this to for like 500 milliseconds or something like that, because you can read, definitely read that quickly over uh, TCP. But then I was getting a warning saying that anything below five risks the stability of home assistant. So yeah, okay, uh, just to keep, um, you know, just to be peace with Home Assistant, I just set it to five. But again, you can uh, decide whether you want to uh, use as um, a quicker or a smaller scan interval. And uh, this verify here means that not only that it's going to write the coil whenever you change something on the UI, but it's going to constantly read it. And that's the functionality which ensures that if I set this output from a different source, then the state change is going to be picked up by Home Assistant. So, but you know, this is a thing, uh, this is a digital output, it's as simple as that. And of course, the third output, which I also configured as light, um, so the first one is address zero, second one is address one, sec a third is address two, and the fourth is address four. So you can see that uh, the output four as output three has exactly the same configuration. The only difference is that it has address two. And for the fan, um, this is the second output, so it has address one. And the switch is the uh, fourth output, so it has address three. So Really, the only difference is what entity it is created under it. Other than that, everything, you know, under the the entity is the same. Really, it's just only the address which changes. So these are the four outputs. Let's talk about the inputs. It has four inputs as well, because uh, but because I only have a port connected to the first one, I'm doing all these examples on the first input, and obviously you can change uh, or replicate 
um, these values and copy and paste these values to the second, third, and the fourth output, sorry, input as well. So I created two inputs, uh, and on the screen you could see that there, there was a row value, and um, this is an entity type sensor, and the name is row value. Again, the slave is one because it's the main device, and address is zero. So again, just like with the outputs, the first input is address zero, and then one, two, and three. And um, the input type is an input because it's an input register, not a holding register. And that's it. So this just re basically reads in the row value that is coming from the device. And I wanted to convert this row value into um, like the, you know, the tank leader. Some, I wanted to use some sort of calculation. But unfortunately, within, for Modbus, when you are defining something in Modbus, you can't use... Uh, lambda functions and you can't use uh, date ranges either that would have been easier so um, this is why i created this row sensor and i have created a template sensor that you can see here on the bottom of the screen by the way can i make this any bigger Ooh, okay so i had to create this template sensor let me do this i'm not going to save it which, uh, because within the template sensor, I can use this calculation to calculate the uh, the row value into a value. So I created a template section and again sensor entity type. And now the name is the water tank and it is a volume class and the unit of measure is liters. Of course, you can change this. And there is a calculation here. So as you can see, it reads the row value sensor. And... Uh, what I've specified is that um, I check the row value, you know, what is the maximum and the minimum reading. So let's say if you have a pressure transducer and you install it on a water tank, you, you would uh, notice, you, you know, note down what is the minimum and the maximum value when the tank is empty and when the tank is full. So let's say that those values for me is 4,000 maximum value as one, and 1,000 is the negative value. And I want to translate these values into 0 to 300 liters. Uh, so that's the calculation. So 0 is the is the minimum liter value and then 300 minus, minus 0 is the maximum liter value minus the you know the minimum actual value or let's say uh, displayed value and then 4000 minus 1000 are the uh, maximum and the, and the minimum row values times by the actual sensor value and minus again my 1000 which is the minimum uh, row value and that's the calculation uh, maybe if you have other ways of doing this uh, you can play around with it but after reading the documentation that was the that was the only way i could find out how i can use a template sensor which reference is to another sensor to calculate a, a value from it so but i think you know, most of the sensors that you would be connecting to it, I think they are like linear sensors. Uh, probably the the only complication is if you have a tank which is sitting on the side, because then, you know, the, the uh, volume would depend on... The volume doesn't change linearly with the height of the, the water in the tank. So just for the sake of simplicity, I assume that this is a, you know, like a vertical tank like a barrel which is uh, like a you know water catchment barrel or tank which is usually like you know a vertical cylinder I guess you get the idea so this is how I created the water level in liters again if you are using it for to measure uh, like a pressure sensor then you can uh, just as easily convert the row values into uh, bars or PSIs or, I don't know, millimeters of mercury or something like that. So that was the raw value. And with this, I've, you know, done configuring the four outputs and, well, one of the four inputs. And again, if you want to, if you would have um, devices connected to the second, third and the fourth input, then you create, uh, you, you make a different sensor, you copy this section, uh, so you create maybe like a row input one, row input two, row input three, something like that. And the only thing you change is that the address becomes uh, zero, one, two, and three. 
and then you would create another yet another template sensor which uses a different calculation and then here you just specify like let's say sensor dot um, row underscore input underscore one or zero or two or three and with this yes we completed them the configuration of the main device and um, now I started configuring the temperature and the humidity sensor. So again, based on what I've said in the previous video, this could be any sensor, anything which communicates over Modbus. Um, and this particular, my particular sensor is configured to the slave address 50. So in order to get the, uh, the first, the humidity, I had to create a sensor and uh, the slave is 50. The address is zero because uh, on this device, the first input register is the humidity and the second input register is the temperature. So as you can see, the input type is input as in input register, address is zero. So this is the first input register and the device class is humidity. And um, this unit will send the values in a single register and it sends, um, you know, the values times 10. So I said precision is one, so you know one digits, and it has to scale by 0 0.1. So it just divides all the values by 10. So if I have uh, 24.2 degrees, that means that it's sending 242 in the. So that's why I need to divide it by 10, and the unit of measure is percentage. And for to configure the temperature again, the slave is 50 because this is this has a mode bus address of 50. Now the address is one because this is the second input register and the thing is the same. So uh, the scale is uh, 0.1, the precision is one, the count is one because we are just reading one register. I think I could, should, could have omitted this one. And for the temperature, the device, uh, the device class is uh, temperature and the unit is uh, C because it's sending the values in um, uh, Celsius. And um, that's a good question, how you would convert it to Fahrenheit, because uh, again, there is no lambda function here. So I think for this, you probably have to create a sensor type again, where you can use either the same calculation formula or maybe a lambda function to convert the Celsius into Fahrenheit. But I think you can, you know, uh, create a formula just like this uh, to, uh, to specify the conversion uh, from uh, Fahrenheit from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, and that's it. It wasn't that e that difficult. It took me about two hours to get all of these working, especially these template sensor took a long time I could uh, until I could really figure out how, uh, how to do it. And um, actually, if you um, search home assistant, there is a really good documentation of what the, uh, the mode bus integration or binding whatever it's called is um, uh, is capable of and again as i said um, there are only a few things that uh, the mode bus supports so you can create like lights and fans and sensors and uh, uh, the switch and i think you can do climate so if you have devices which sends um, um, like thermostats, then you can use the climate. Uh, I think it's called the entity type. And then there is something like a cover. So those would be like uh, blinds and uh, uh, yeah, shutters, that sort of stuff where you can like specify like um, what is not only the state, whether it's up and down, like that it's 20% up, something like that. So you can use registers for that. But there is a, like, there are like a tons of information here and uh, um, so you just have to read through this document, it's not that big. And again, um, just to, oh, I don't want to save these changes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and just always keep in mind that whenever you are making changes, uh, first check the configuration, because uh, I go, I've, I've received loads of errors because I was, you know, I was trying to use Lambda functions, the date ranges, and um, so some of these are just not supported with Modbus. So if you would use the same for, let's say, MQTT, they would work, but not for Modbus. So there are some limitations, and that was one of the reasons I created the template sensors. 
So I think that will be all for today. As I said, the link to the YAML file is going to be in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.